Hey everybody, Preston Bren here with our weekly roundup for our trader user group. This is for the trading week ending January 12, 2018. What I've got on the screen here is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 E-mini futures. And you can see that we've just been on a tear. Um, this covers all of 2017 as we kick off 2018 and the latter part of 2016 when we went through the election with uh, Trump coming into office. You can see the overnight lows. I remember we had our chat room open and we were up trading the markets uh, during the election. It was a lot of fun. We made a lot of money. Um, and 2017 turned out to be a really good year for us. Um, a number of my compatriots and friends that are running hedge funds, uh, some of them quite large, some analysts that I know as well, have been trying to short this market for quite some time and they've been screaming as loud as they can that we've got overvaluations, this market's getting bubblicious and so forth and so forth and inflation's going to kick in, yet 2017 turned out to be a very, very strong year for us. As you guys know, if you've been following my weekly roundup, I've been saying all year that we're in a buy in the dip. I don't see anything in the charts that would indicate that we're going to roll over. I still don't see anything in the charts that are going to indicate we're going to roll over. Yes, we may have a dip or two. Um, and I define a dip as less than a 5% pullback. In fact, we haven't had a 5% pullback in almost 380 days, trading days. It just goes way back. We haven't had a 2% pullback in quite some time also. Um, and we've kicked off this new year, 2018, the first five days we were positive. Anytime there's an old theory running around a stat that says in the first five trading days of the new year, if we're up, we're in the green, then about 73% of the time the markets are going to finish up for the year. And there's another stat that says if we finish January in the green, then 82% of the time the markets finish higher for the year. So we're getting a lot of tailwind behind us. That's not to say that we're not going to have surprises in 2018 that we did not expect in 27 of 17. And of course we are because at the beginning of 2017, I think one of the biggest investor miscalculations was that of the U S dollar index. Most people felt that the dollar index would move higher due to a, uh, a higher growth with Trump coming in a little bit of a reflationary event. Um, and we would see interest rates start to move up and bonds fall over. But in actuality, that did not happen. The Fed was relatively soft. The 10-year yield stayed relatively low. Europe maintained their strong uh, stimulus, uh, Super Mario Draghi and the ECB. All of that stuff had a, had a way of unwinding some of the expectations as we went into 2017. Um, and it seems like the markets have been trying to call a bear market in the bond market for quite some time. We had a little bit of a blip or a little bit of a, a pop uh, this past week with China when they basically changed their daily fixing rate for their yuan. Um, but it really, the markets, the, the, the interest rates rolled back below um, or just to finish slightly above 2.5% for the 10-year yield. So, what are the big forecasts as we go into 2018? Again, the miscalculation was lower interest rates, our interest rates staying relatively low, no bear market for the bond market, and the dollar was basically low as well. The other thing that missed forecasts was volatility. Volatility for 2017 was e extremely low. Um, and a lot of this is structural in nature. By that, I mean we've seen a huge influx of passive index funds. In fact, if you look at Vanguard, I, I read a stat where 95% of the S&P 500 companies, Vanguard has more than a 5% stake in them. That's huge, folks. Um, and they're not really trying to find that needle in the haystack that's going to really outperform others. They're just buying the haystack. And what that does is it has a ten tendency to suppress volatility across the entire structure of the markets and then you throw in all this quantitative easing and then you throw in some of these huge technological bumps that we're seeing kind of the amazon effect where they're keeping the prices low at the consumer level consumer spending level and you throw on top of that they're still doing massive amounts of stimulus in europe although they're cutting back a little bit but they're still doing stimulus there they're still committed to stimulus in japan and China does what they need to do to keep the, the yuan in check and their and their growth curve running at, you know, in the high sixes. So, again, now we're coming into 2018. 
what do these prognosticators feel for 2018? Well, I, I they're going back to the same tune that they had at 2017. Their view as well. This was our view for 2017. We expect higher interest rates. We expect uh, obviously the bonds to go lower. Um, and we see inflation start to take hold. So let's do the same thing again for 2018. And guess what? Eventually, as you guys know, they will be right. <laughs> Sooner or later, they'll be right. And they'll say, you see, we got it right. You know, but it, what do they? what's the saying go? Even a stopwatch is right twice a day in a 24-hour period. So, you know, we've got that kind of thing going on. For us and our user group, um, our magic and our secret sauce is we follow the price action and the patterns. You do that and you're just not going to get caught uh, being bullish in a downward trending market or you're not going to be caught being bearish in an uptrending market. Okay, It's just you're not going to be – we're not going to play that game. We're going to let price action tell us what we need to do. Now, what that means is we're not going to hit the peaks. We're not going to catch the valleys, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and we play that game and we've been playing it uh, quite well since 2008. Uh, when I started our group, and it's just been running great since. So um, <clears throat> let's take a look at this chart here. This is the weekly chart, as I said, of the S&P 500 futures. You can see this channel here, which it looks fairly tight. Again, this is a weekly chart, so it's going to be tight because each bar represents five trading days, one week. Um, but this is kind of, we've only been outside of the channel to the north one time, before and that was around the end of February of 2017 and now we've just really accelerated to the upside now as we come into the new year okay with this tax package and and um, everything set up the way it's been set up so if you look at this um, what happens when a market's moving higher it moves up and then the rate of excel and get uh, acceleration gets more until it almost goes ballistic okay and then once it gets up at this level here, it can't sustain it. And we have a little bit of a pullback. And then we make an attempt at another higher high to take out that prior high right there. Now, whether we do it or not, time will tell. Um, but we get a lot more chop. And then all of a sudden, and we've defined key pivot levels here, when we take it out, that's when it gets a little bit uglier, right? We're not there yet, but we are in this acceleration mode. How long can this mode last? It can last over a year or two, okay? So I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a heads up. I believe the first part of the year anyway, my charts are indicating to me that we can still be in a very strong momentum-fueled uh, rally to the upside, okay? Now that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Uh, now. And, of course, if that changes, then it changes. But we got to play what we see not necessarily uh, what we think it should be happening, right? You can't play that. You got to do what the price action is doing, no matter how illogical it may sound, okay? So <clears throat> we're in some structural changes in the markets that I just mentioned earlier. So this is kind of where we're sitting. You can see the 2018 highs. Let's come down to a daily chart here, bring it in a little bit more focused. You can see the 2018 high here uh, coming in. Uh, right here about 2790 you can see that our open price is almost near our low price for 2018 around 2675 roughly so we're, we're over 115 points in literally just <laughs> a week or two just a couple of weeks into the new year 115 points in the S&P just unbelievable there is no divergences here on this chart folks um, the only thing that I see that's a little bit problematic, but it would just be a buy the dip kind of thing, is we're several deviations north of the 50 EMA. And here's the 200 EMA. The 200 EMA is down around 2,500. The 50 EMA is sitting around 2,648. So call it 2,650. We're very extended off of these things. So a little bit of a sideways to chop to slightly down, but I think any move lower than you know 40 or 50 points is just going to be bought you know um it, it's just that's the way the markets want to be right now now we are going into major earnings remember this monday markets are closed it's mlk day uh but then on tuesday we got some more banks we got citigroup coming out with their earnings um uh, and we've got uh, in the health care side we got united healthcare group coming in um, and then on Wednesday, we got, uh, we got um, 
uh, Schwab coming out and Bank of America. Okay, so Tuesday and Wednesday, we get some more banks coming in. The banks that we got for Wells Fargo and JP Morgan, uh, a little bit mixed, but they were still up a little bit. Okay, Thursday, we get uh, Bank of New York, BB&T, Amex, uh, American Express, and Webster Financials, a couple of regionals, um, you know, that we got coming out. And then, of course, on Friday, we got uh, some of the oil companies. It's going to be led up by Schlumberger uh, coming out. <clears throat> so, and then SunTrust, another big regional bank. So we're we're just now really starting to get in over the next couple of weeks. Some um, earnings kicking in, led off by the financials, and then we'll start to get into some other sectors as well. Also, this week we got the Federal Beige Book coming out in the middle of the week on Wednesday just kind of take a look at the U.S. economic conditions. So, um, and if that's not enough, we're going to have week after this week, we're going to have the Fed's meeting again. That'll be um, uh, Aunt B, a.k.a. Janet Yellen, our one of our favorite um, Fed chairman, be a last meeting, and then she steps down, and then Power Ranger Powell takes over in February. So it'll be real interesting to see how he's going to play it. But I don't see anything here that would indicate any downside. I mean, let's take a look at some of the other indexes. You're going to see the same thing. If we look at the Russell, which is small and mid cap, I mean, you can see here, let me just take, um, you can see that the, um, let me just get this off the screen here, clear it up a little bit for you. You can see here, even here, we're, we're near the 2018 highs and all time highs. We cleared 1600 in the rut, in the Russell futures. Um, and if we look at NASDAQ, Take a look at where we are here in NASDAQ. We're near the 2018 highs as we finish the week off. Another strong finish. We don't see, I don't see any divergences here in this chart, right? And then let's look at the, the huge moves we're seeing in the Dow futures. Again, finish near the highs, 25,813. So we've just got just nothing but momentum pushing us. Now, the tendency of these things is you've got that fear of missing out disease called the FOMA disease. And there's really no cure for it except experience in the market. And even then, you got to kind of bat it down a little bit. So it could create an accelerated move up until we get a little bit of a profit-taking play here before it rolls over. The only thing that can stop the momentum and really put the markets on its heels um, is if we have earnings coming in much worse than people had forecasted. Um, and you couple that with a more of a hawkish Fed. Um, that could slow things down, but I don't see that happening. And most of the the um, the whisper numbers I'm getting on earnings, as well as some of the pre-announced um, uh, anticipations for some of these things, as analyst guidance, seems to be uh, at expectation or even higher. So you know, I'm seeing these things; they're all looking fairly strong. And again, if we take a look at the um, uh, Dow Jones transports, if we look at the transports, look at this: it finished at the highs. 2018 highs, transports, they're even strong. So we're getting strength across all major sectors. And then, of course, let's look at the world index, right? If we look at the global world index, the Vanguard, um, again, finished Fridays at the highs, 2018 highs for the global world index. Boom. We look at China. We look at China, the measuring index for China, 2018 highs. We took out the 2017 highs and boom, here we are again. So China's looking strong. Um, I, folks, I'm just seeing strength everywhere I turn right now. Again, we can have a little bit of a pullback, but I just do not see anything here that would, would cause me to have any concerns right now. Okay. Uh, it's just, it, it's looking very strong. Now, if we come over here and we look at um, the uh, treasury market, let's look at bonds. Bonds had a, a falling out here. Um, we kind of, let's go back on the weekly chart here just to kind of put a little bit of perspective on this. We were at this tight level here, and we're starting to break it, right, in this area here. And once we broke it, I do believe that the odds favor us to come down to test the 2017 lows around 145. That, to me, makes a lot of sense. In fact, I'm forecasting bond market in near term to come down to around 140.31. Okay, this is a 345 Elliott wave pattern. I believe this is kind of where it's going to go. I don't think we're going to go much lower than that. We could take it all the way down to the 135 area should things get ugly, but I just don't see it. Now, remember, the bond market, we've been in a bull market for quite some time with bonds, which means we've been in a bear market with interest rates, meaning interest rates are very low. <clears throat> 
but I do believe that we're gonna we're gonna see a rise in rates. We're gonna see bonds come down a little bit, and that correlation. Remember, there have been times where the mar equity markets have been screaming higher, but so have the bonds, which means interest rates are going lower. Um, um, bonds are going up along with equities. I think we're going to have um, some periods of time here in 2018 where not only are equities falling, but so are bonds, right? So, you know, and where does that leave the uh, fixed income investor? So this is where we're sitting at right here um, uh, in the uh, the bond market. If we look at interest rates, okay, let's go to the uh, uh, tenure. You can see here with this 10-year, had this regression channel on here. I had forecasted here, and you may have seen this chart before. I know my members have, uh, where I said, once we break this regression channel, we're moving up to this area right in this here, about 2.75. And we've, we're getting there quicker than I thought. But this is kind of where we're sitting. We're finishing near the 20, 2018 high interest rate, 2.595%. Okay? So uh, this all portends... Um, uh, a bigger move uh, in in bonds to the downside because that's what drive these rates higher. Okay, so that's that is a little bit about uh, interest rates. Now, if we look at the the let's take this out to a monthly here for just one second. Let's put some big time perspective on this thing, and let's just zoom out as far as we can go. All right, so I'm only going back to about 1990 here. Okay, and if I take everything off the screen like this. And then I put a downsloping channel on it, right? Let's just put a trend line in here, just like this. It doesn't have to be exact, but you guys get the idea. Um, it, this is kind of showing, once we break this level here, in my mind, which is around, now I know uh, Bill Gross is on record as saying, once interest rates in the 10-year get over 2.5%, I believe it's closer to 275 to 3, okay? And you can see this goes way, way back. This goes all the way back to 1994. Now, I can carry this back to 1981, and this trend still stays intact because back then the interest rates are up in the, in the, in the mid to upper teens, right? Going back to... Uh, uh, 1994 interest rates are about 8.1% on the 10 year. Once we break this here and we start this, I think we're in a long, long two to four year move to the upside. We've been captured between 3% and 1.38% since 2012. Once we break out, right, and then the key for me is once we take some of these numbers out right there, 3.03%, um, 303 basis points, that's going to change the whole look, not only of the interest rate market, but also of the equity market, because there's only two things that drive stock prices, uh, really. Uh, one is earnings and two is interest rates. That changes the dynamics of the P.E. ratios, price to earnings, and also plays havoc on four discounted cash flow earnings for corporations. The higher the interest rates, the lower it goes, the, the, it's going to put downward pressure on PEs. Until we get up in this area here, I think we're fairly good to go. But we will get there, guys. All things do change. We've been in this bear market for interest rates or a bull market for bonds, you know, for 20, 30 years, quite some time. But I think it's going to change. Um, but near term, first part of this year, no. Um, we're going to be challenging it. You can do some near-term trades, but longer term, um, I think for 2018, we're going to see a slight bump in rates, but that's pretty much where I'm looking at here. Okay. If we look at high yield debt, HYG. Now, we've played this trade before. Let's come back to a weekly chart here first. We made money in this trade before. <clears throat> this tends to go with the markets. This is highly correlated with the U.S. equity markets. Okay, And some people like to measure uh, the potential of a recession by looking at the spread between high yield uh, junk bonds and uh, uh, treasuries. Um, and, you know, you, you want to have this on your screen, even though you may not trade it. You need to follow this. You got to follow the credit markets. Now, for those of you that are not members of our group, um, we're going through what I call the Option Masters Education Series. It's probably going to be over 200 videos, um, sessions, right? Each session is cut into about 15, 20 minute uh, soundbite segments. Um, I highly encourage you to come in and check it out because it's a great educational tool for you. I don't care whether you trade interest rates or not. I don't care whether you trade bonds or not. 
or currencies, but you better know what they're doing because the markets today are so interrelated globally, not just here in the U.S., that it's going to help you if you're even if you're a stock equity only trader. So that's what I'm looking at um, in the um, treasury market right now. And then, of course, if we come over here, look at the dollar. It's rolled over. It's moving to my target. Uh, let's come back into a daily chart. Remember what I said about the dollar? Everybody thought the dollar would go higher. Look at this. This is pretty much 2017. 2017 open and high price. The day that the dollar opened, we've been going down ever since. And look at this channel, right? And then we started to have a little bit of a correction here when it looked like we were going to be moving up. And then we broke it. We did a head and shoulders pattern and we broke it right down. We're coming down on my measure and objective there on this colored bar. In fact, we may even hit it faster than I would have thought. Okay. There it is right there. I've had it on my screen. I was talking to our members about this. Um, look at that. This is ugly for the dollar. Now, <clears throat> you would think fundamentally and logically with a very strong U.S. economy, with everything pointing up, that the dollar would be getting stronger. But as I've told everybody before, keep in mind, this is not the dollar. This is a dollar index. And what moves the dollar index are other currencies. Okay. And that would be the euro, which accounts for about 58% of the dollar index. And then you got the yen and you got um, um, a few others that are floating around out there like the pound and the Swiss franc. So, but anyway, the dollar is down. We just took out the 2017 low for the dollar. It was a key point uh, and away we go. And I was calling for the dollar to come down just a little bit lower. And then we'll probably find some consolidation point down here. Okay. With the dollar. Of course, if we look at the euro, it's going to look just the opposite. We've had a strong move in the euro to the upside. Look at it. We're hitting, we're going right through my target here on the euro. Uh, and we're slightly above that target right now on the euro. So one of the trades I was calling for in our members, and here's that three, four, five pattern, right? Um, and then I can put my regression line on this and say, look, we broke this to the downside. As soon as we broke it, it'd be a signal. Let's look at going long. Uh, everything looked fundamentally sound, but I didn't have, the only thing I didn't see was any bullish divergences here. So uh, we would have been a little bit more cautious here, uh, in this thing. But once we cleared this prior pivot high here, uh, which is near the 2018 low, then it was just all smooth selling to, to finish this thing out. Okay. Um, and then of course, if we look at gold, gold has been surprising a lot of people. All right. Um, we've really cleared the major uh, resistance point around the 1300 area. And look at this. I mean, really, since first part of December, gold has moved up from the low 1240s all the way up uh, here to 1338. Okay, And it's a Elliott Wave 3, though, so that suggests that we can move even higher. Um, and you can see the 2016 high, 2017 high, 2018 high that I've got on the chart. So, um, these will serve as resistance points for us going forward, but I do believe that gold, as I said about um, in December, I said gold in 2018 is going to finish, finish higher than where we are right now, and I still believe that. And then, of course, one of our best trades uh, is in the oil market. We're right at about 24 trades in a row of successful of success with oil. And oil is going to be very interesting for 2018. You can see this, and this is a daily chart. Let's put it on a weekly chart, put a little bit of perspective into the trade. Here it is right here. You can see here that this huge, huge area here we've just taken out, and we're sitting here, and we've got a FIB extension node sitting at $71.20, $71.20 cents a barrel here. And then we get up to 76 and up to 80. I do believe that we're going to probably be range bound for the year, but we've got a little bit more momentum that'll probably carry us up into the high 60s, possibly even to the lower 70s before it starts to, to ebb and flow and give us a little bit more of a range bound chop. But uh, we've played this nicely. We've been long XLE and the oil sector as well as the trades that we're doing in the oil futures market. In fact, for our secret trader this year, we're kicking it off. I've got um, three separate portfolios of varying sizes from 7,000 to 25,000 to 100,000. Each one is only going to trade oil. And we've had 24 out of 20.